Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog PharmaSanBoon.com and today I'm going to share with you our mudroom organization makeover. When we first moved into our Victorian farmhouse just over a year ago, we did a mudroom makeover pretty quickly. I painted the door and added a few touches, painted the floor, and we worked with the shoe organizer that we had from our last house that was in our mudroom in the farmhouse before. Now that worked decently, but we found that we really didn't have enough storage for all of the things that we need in a mudroom. So for example, I like the mudroom to have swimsuits if you're gonna go swimming in the summer or if you're swimming indoors in the winter. I like it to have life jackets, coats, hats, gloves, all of those things that we used to have to go down, the basement door is right here, down to the basement to get, they can all be fully accessible right here. Now we tried to kind of do it in the shoe organizer thing that we had, but there just wasn't enough space and the fact that you couldn't close any doors made it to where the kids would disorganize it pretty quickly. And so we decided that we wanted some kind of built-in cabinetry. I knew pretty quickly that we wanted that, but I didn't think we would do it anytime soon. But Lily Ann Cabinetry reached out to me and talked about the potential of collaborating on a project. And I instantly thought of the mudroom. Now what was so great about this process is I sent them the custom measurements of this space, so this exact wall here in our mudroom. And they sent the custom cabinetry just for this spot. So that was so awesome because with the kitchen, we had to do some custom cabinetry because we wanted to add a vintage sink and a vintage stove. And hiring a builder to do them is awesome, but it definitely costs a lot. This was a way to get the built-in custom look a lot less expensive. Now, we also needed kind of a custom depth because this is an add-on and so there is exterior siding back here. Now, we thought about ripping it down and redoing it, but that just wasn't gonna happen right now. There are too many other things to do. So we needed the cabinets to come just to this little piece of trim and so that they fit absolutely perfectly. So I worked with one of Lillian's designers and we decided that we wanted a few drawers on the bottom and we wanted shelving on one side and somewhere to hang coats on the other and then I wanted it to go all the way to the ceiling and be finished off with crown molding. That way it would have that built-in look, kind of historic like it's always been here and fully functional because we get a lot of storage out of this really tiny space. This house does not have closets. It has actually one closet that goes underneath the stairs so it's really not the most accessible closet in the whole house. So we have to be creative with how we do storage. We have a lot of armoires throughout the house. And then this was a way to pretty much add a closet. I feel like we have a whole new closet at this point. So now I'm going to take you on a little tour and talk about how we organize everything. And you'll have to excuse my voice, I have something that is not um, great at all. So I'm trying to push through, but also resting quite a bit. <laughs> but I needed to get this recorded. So in the bottom section, there are small doors. Now the reason that we did that is I wanted the hardware to match all the way up. So I used the exact same hardware that we went with in the kitchen because the kitchen is right next door 
and these kind of flow together through their French doors so you can see the kitchen in this kind of match. So what we did is we had Lillian send drawer slides and drawers for the bottom doors. So they open up and then pull out like drawers. Now what I'm gonna put in those spots are shoes that shouldn't be smashed into bins. So ladies' boots, like my daughter's boots and my boots, that are the short kind of boots. Unfortunately, mine were chewed up by the dog. I had a nice pair of Tom's wedges, but those are no more. But whenever I get another similar pair, that is where they will go. My daughters have some cute little boots that go in there and they can stand up and they don't, they don't get smashed. Also just any other shoes if we don't have enough to fill up the spot. Now moving up on the right side, I put a tension rod in. I didn't grab the spring-loaded one, which is what we had our curtain on in our last house and it constantly falls down. I don't know why I never discovered these ones that you can tighten so much, but we just put a tension rod in, add some hangers, and now everybody's coats can fit right there. I thought about adding a second tension rod below, but it didn't really work because there wasn't enough space. So we're just gonna make that the coat area. Now I originally thought that I would be able to store life jackets and coats and not really swap things out from downstairs. I was able to put summer swimsuits up here because we do swim indoors in the winter, but I'm going to leave the life jackets downstairs for the winter and then swap coats and life jackets on this tension rod, but leave the swimsuits in the area that they're in. Now on the left, we have the shelves and then I have bins for everybody's shoes. I have a couple of wooden bins that I just found at random antique shops. Now I combined a few kids, so for example in the large box I have Jude and Eli's shoes. They kind of are interchangeable, they wear each other's shoes a lot, and just because I didn't have enough space to put a bin for everybody, and they don't have enough shoes to fill up a whole bin, I did combine a few kids. Now in the bottom part we put a mat, like a rug type of thing, and that is where muddy shoes are going. Just yesterday we had quite a muddy day. The kids played outside because it was warm, but it's just February, and so everything is just an absolute mess. And so that is the place where all current muddy outside shoes are going to go, because this is a mud room, and we use it like a mud room. I've thought about making this like a really pretty, nice sunroom, eating area kind of thing, but the, the truth is, we already have two eating areas. We don't even use both of those. And what we really need is a mud room. So this room is meant to get dirty. It's purely functional, though I do find that these cabinets make it a lot more beautiful as well. Now moving up to the top sections, I just grabbed some bins. I did a row of some floral bins that were pretty inexpensive. They're canvas bins. And then I did a row of wicker bins up top. Now the middle row is full of snow pants. I just decided that I wanted to store all of the snow pants up here because we use them pretty regularly in the winter and it's not fun to go downstairs and get them. Now I might leave them up here in the summer just because I don't really have anything else that I need to store there. So they might just stay. But if I find that there's something else for summer that I need, I might swap them. But I don't really think I'll have to. The top row has different categories. I have a gloves one, a hat one, and then a swimsuits, and then goggles, and random things like my daughters love to have mermaid tails at the pool, and snorkels, and all that kind of stuff. I also forgot to mention that in the main compartment I have a box full of socks. We've always stored all of our socks together. It just makes it easy when you're going through laundry. You can put all of the socks into the bin, and when you need socks, you pull out a couple that match. That's just how we do it. We're pretty laid back about the laundry, and you know that from my kitchen video that I also don't fold washcloths, so I just try to keep things really simple. But we used to keep them all in a drawer upstairs, which as you can imagine, we're all in this mudroom getting ready to leave, and nobody has socks. And so then we send kids upstairs to get socks, and they might forget halfway up there what they're doing. You know how it is. So I decided that it would make more sense to have the socks down here. We just never really had a good place to put them before. So now we're storing them here. It also makes sense because the laundry room is down here. So before you bring the laundry upstairs, we put you know rags where they go, socks where they go. 
and then go upstairs. Also, we put some hooks in the back of the doors on the coat hanger side so that I can put my diaper bag there. It's always just been kind of sitting wherever. And so now it has a spot where we walk in. I can put it right here. Now Lily Ann Cabinetry has offered my viewers 5% off with the code BASS4440. That's 5% off anything site-wide. I'm going to work on the pantry soon and I'm going to talk to one of their designers about making me cabinets for the pantry because it too is a really custom little area. I don't need the cabinets very deep. It's very precise as to what I need. And so I really liked the easy design process and that the cabinets showed up ready to go. I'm thinking about doing a color in the pantry, so we'll see. But that is definitely something on my radar and I'm going to be looking into Lily and cabinets for that as well. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. I will leave a link to Lily Ann and the coupon code in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed watching how we've made over our mudroom and turned a very tiny, unusable space here in our mudroom into a fully functioning closet for everything that we need. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.